Linear Algebra, Echelon Form, what is it? The process of using gauss jordan elimination to transform a matrix, Y, helps to solve for missing variables. Interesting fact, peacock feathers account for 60% of the bird's total body length, and with a wingspan measuring 5 feet, or 1.5 meters, it is one of the largest flying birds in the world. Now let's take a look at the definition. Rule Echelon Form has three rules. Rule 1. The first non-zero element in each row, called the leading entry, is 1. Rule 2. Each leading entry is in a column to the right of the leading entry in the previous row. Rule 3. Rows with all zero elements, if any, are below rows having a non-zero element. Now, let's use an example to go over the rules, starting with Rule 1. The first non-zero element in each row, called the leading entry, is 1. If we take a look at row 1, the first number is 1, so that is our leading entry. If we take a look at row 2, the first number is 0, so the next number is 1, so that is our leading entry. If we take a look at row 3, the first two numbers are 0. The next number is 1, so that is our leading entry. What happens if the number after the 0 is not 1? Well, we will go over that in a bit. Our last row, row 4, doesn't have any numbers or elements that are non-zero, so we don't have a leading entry. Now, let's talk about rule 2. Each leading entry is in a column to the right of the leading entry in the previous row. This rule has two parts. The first part, all the numbers below the leading entry must be zero. And part two, the next leading entry must be to the right of the previous one. In row one, we have our leading entry one and all the elements below are zero. Now in row two, the leading entry one is to the right of the previous one in row two and all the elements below are zero. Now in row three, the leading entry one is to the right of the previous one in row two and the element below it is zero. Once again, Row 4 doesn't have a leading entry. Now, let's take a look at Rule 3. Rows with all zero elements, if any, are below rows having a non-zero element. In this case, row 4 has all zeros, so that is why it is on the bottom row. That is all the rules of row echelon form. In a bit, we'll talk about reduced row echelon form. But now, let's take a look at an example on how to change it into row echelon form. Our first step is to look at row 1. Our first element is 1, which makes it the leading entry, and all the elements beneath 1 are 0. So row 1 is perfect. Now let's move on to row 2. Our second element is 1, which makes it our leading entry, but all the elements beneath 1 are not 0. So now we need to transform these rows to get row echelon form. We want our principal diagonal to be full of 1s when possible. So in row 3, the 0 that is circled, we need to try to make that a 1. And in row 4, the negative 5, we want to try and make that a 1. Now, let's transform these rows, starting with row 3. Since all the numbers in front of 10 are 0, we're going to multiply by 1 tenth to each element, and the result is 0, 0, 0, 1. And that is our new row 3. Now, let's rewrite our matrix so we have more room. Let's transform row 3 again. What do you think we're going to do? Well, we're going to switch places with row 4. Since we want the number 1 to be in the principal diagonal, let's show our work. Let's switch our rows. Now we have switched row 3 and row 4. Now let's rewrite our matrix so we have more room. We need to look at the element 2 in row 3 beneath the 1 in row 2. We need that 2 to be a 0. In order to do that, we're going to use row 2. If we have row 3 minus 2 times row 2, then the 2 becomes a 0. Let's see our result. Our new row 3 is 0, 0, 1, and negative 17. We have transformed this matrix into row echelon form. If you are not yet there, there are more detailed videos in the description below. Now, let's actually check to see if this matrix follows the rules. The principal diagonal is full of 1s, which follows rule 1 and rule 2. Since we don't have a row full of zeros, we don't have to worry about rule 3. Now it is your turn, so go ahead and pause the video here so you can take your time to answer this question. And I'll show you the results in 3, 2, and 1. Did you get it correct? Awesome. If not, there's always tomorrow. Now let's take a look at the rules for reduced row echelon form. Rule 1 is the matrix satisfies the conditions for a row echelon form. And rule 2 is the leading entry in each row is the only non-zero entry in its column. Now let's take a look at an example to see how this works. Our matrix is already in row echelon form, which satisfies rule 1. We need to work on rule 2 to transform this matrix into reduced row echelon form. 
which basically means we want, if possible, our principal diagonal to be full of 1s and the rest to be zeros. Let's transform row 1 by using row 1 and row 2. If we have row 1 minus 2 times row 2, then our new row 1 will be 1, 0, 0, and 0. Now, let's rewrite our matrix so we can show our next step. Let's transform row 2 by using row 2 and row 3. If we have row 2 minus 5 times row 3, then our new row 2 will be 0, 1, 0, and 16. Now, let's rewrite our matrix so we can show our next step. Let's transform once again row 2, but this time using row 2 and row 4. If we have row 2 minus 16 times row 4, then our new row 2 will be 0, 1, 0, and 0. Now, let's rewrite our matrix so we can show our next step. Let's transform row 3 by using row 3 and row 4. If we have row 3 plus 2 times row 4, then our new row 3 will be 0, 0, 1, and 0. Now, let's rewrite our matrix. Our matrix is finally in reduced row echelon form. We went through those steps quickly. Once again, check out the videos on how to do that in more detail in the description below. Let's check to see if our matrix follows the rules. We have the principal diagonal full of 1s and zeros beneath them. That is rule 1. And for rule 2, we have our zeros above. So our matrix is in reduced row echelon form. Now it is your turn. So go ahead and pause the video here so you can take your time to answer the question and I'll show you the results in 3, 2, and 1. You got it correct? Awesome. If not, there's always tomorrow.